Good morning from the University of Maine at Fort Kent. This is your GIS professor, Neil Thompson. I am trying two new software packages today. One is ArcGIS Pro, and the other is my new recording software. So we'll see if this works. So I've just opened up ArcGIS Pro here, and we have the option to use one of these templates or start without a template. Let's start by making a map asks where I would like to place this, and I'm going to place this in the default. If you save this to your C drive, it will get wiped at midnight because the computers revert to their last saved state. So don't do that. Save it to your thumb drive or your Google Drive folder. So I'm going to hit OK, and today I'm going to replicate my GIS lab number two where we look at the roads in Fort Kent that get salted in the wintertime, and we look at the streams that intersect those. We're going to buffer both the streams and the roads and intersect where those features, where those buffers, overlap. So let's see what we have here. We've defaulted to a nice topographic map. Here's the fine town of Fort Kent. And now we have map, insert, analysis. So we're going to start by inserting our data. So we can add item. No, we do not add item. Map, add data. There we go. So that's gone over to my other screen. Here we go. So I have the ability to navigate wherever I want here. Windows C, GIS NT, my discard folder. And here I've placed the data from my GIS 300 lab number two. And I want the streams, the roads, and the boundaries of Fort Kent. And we have defaulted to WGS 1984, which is the geographic projection or unprojected latitude and longitude coordinates. So let's see if we can fix that. Right click, properties. Oh, let's see. Coordinate systems. Ooh, and it has layers here, so I can select from my layers. I want UTM zone 19 north. And we've reprojected. Very good. All right. So again, that was right-click on Map, Properties, Coordinate Systems. Select the one you want, or you could search using here. Okay. So now we have. I'm going to turn off the topo map and the hill shade here. So now we just have our streams in blue, our roads in purple. Let's click the modify symbol, and we get some options here. Let's go with highways. That looks terrible. Okay, we'll not do that. Ramp. Major road. So what it's doing here is drawing a rounded end every single segment. That's fun. So that one looks fine, so we'll go with that. And we'll do the same for streams and water line. Okay, that looks reasonable enough for now. So we'll close that and now we want to do some analysis. So let's see, we have model builder, that's a little handier than it was before, that's good. So we have clip, we have intersect, we have tools. So if we click on tools, now we can search. This is like the old Arc Desktop search for tools function. So so we have buffer right here, but we could also search for it here. So let's click on buffer. Keeps it all over in the sidebar. That's nice, actually. All right, so input feature will be our salty roads. Gives it an output feature class that we'll save to a default geo database. Distance or value will be, I think I used 75 feet before in units feet linear unit what are our other options okay we enter 75 feet 
side type full and type round and we will dissolve hmm go with no dissolve on that one and we'll keep the planar method oh, see what that does buffer 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 100% updating good so interesting so all of that Every one of the road segments has gotten its own buffer. We don't actually want that, so let's remove. So it's kept this open. It has a warning here for wanting a new name, or else it will overwrite. So side type full, dissolve type, dissolve all outputs into a single feature. Let's go for that. A little different than ArcGIS desktop, but that is the output we want. Good. So now we'll repeat the same thing for our streams. We'll give that 75 feet as well, and rather than salted roads, we will call that Fort Kent Streams buffer. And keep the same dissolve type. So this is nice. It's remembering what we did last and taking a pretty good guess, we would like to do the same thing again. So now we have buffers here, and with the transparency setting, you can actually see where those intersections are. That's pretty handy. So that works for what I'm wanting to do right now. It wouldn't work for everything, but that's good for us. So now we have some of our basic tools up here, intersect. Let's try clicking on that. Okay, so our input features are streams buffer and roads buffer. I have the option to add more. For Kent streams buffer one, going to our default geo database. We'll run that. Intersect completed. So let's turn off these two. And that retains only those areas where it's close to a salted road and close to a stream where we might do some analysis. And that, with a little getting used to, looks perfectly straightforward. So let's take this one step farther and try using Model Builder. So let's go to our Insert all right, analysis tools, and we want to buffer and buffer. And we'll drag in our salted roads, we'll drag in our streams, and let's see, how do we do this? I'm missing a toolbar here. So I should be able to make a connection from this that. Ah, so I click and hold, and that makes the connection used to the first have to click a little button to say make a connection here. So now for Ken Salted Roads goes to buffer. We can click on that, and it's still grayed out where it used to be hollow if it wanted more information. So distance is going to be 75 linear unit feet. Dissolve type, we wanted all outputs into a single feature. Okay, so now it's got color, it's happy. Grayed out, so it wants more information. 75 feet, units, feet, dissolve, all. Now let's see if we can drag from up here into here. We can't, so now I need to search for tools. No, we don't actually, it's right here, but let's do it anyway, let's intersect. Analysis tools, good. Click and drag into Model Builder. Click and hold, drag, release, input features. Repeat for here, input features. Okay, so how do we run it? Right click. Well, let's first make it pretty, so auto, auto layout, good. That's consolidated that for us. Right click and run. Cracking. Done. Close on completion. Now we want to do that. Alright, close. Now add to 
display. So output feature class is here. Here's our map. Here's our output feature class. So some differences in how Model Builder looks and acts, but with the same end result. Very good. So there's my first little analysis in ArcGIS Pro. Everything's a little bit different, but it didn't take me too long to figure that out. And there are some distinct advantages to Pro. So we may continue on with the software in the future.